Good morning class and welcome to another lecture in sustainable energy technology. Till the last class we have discussed finished our discussion on renewable energy technology in general and its various trends and near the end of the last class we focused our attention on renewable electricity generation and we saw that some of the major ways in which electricity can be generated renewably include hydropower which is one of the more established renewable energy technology renewable electricity generation technology in the world so today we begin our discussion on hydroelectric power generation we will start with a brief overview of the history of hydropower the prospects and potentials of hydropower before going into a little bit of the technical aspects of hydroelectric power generation as well by the way this picture is basically a picture of the three gorges dam in china which is the largest hydropower plant in operation in today's world we will discuss a little bit about it near the end of the lecture so this figure again it comes from an international energy agency uh, report yearly report that comes out on the status of various types of electricity and energy generation so uh, technologies and here it charts the production of hydroelectricity electricity from uh, moving water essentially uh, between 1971 and 2019 so more than 50 years worth of data on how much hydroelectricity has been produced worldwide per year from 1971 to 2019 the values are in terawatt hours so of course kilo is 10 to the power 3 mega is 10 to the power 6 giga is 10 to the power 9 and tera is 10 to the power 12 so this is the unit is in terawatt hour of energy so what we see here is in 1971 it was around 1000 terawatt hours of hydroelectric power was generated worldwide and today this has increased to four times that to around 4000 terawatt hours of electricity and what you see here is the uh, regional contributions in terms of different regions of the world the blue is the developed countries the oecd which includes europe usa japan south korea and what are called the developed world countries the dark blue region again is non oecd europe and eurasia which is the countries of the erstwhile soviet union russia ukraine and the rest of the countries of russian federation the yellow is china the red is non oecd asia which is primarily india and southeast asia then the green is non oecd america which is brazil argentina central american countries etc and the purple is africa and what you can see from this picture is that in 1971 most of hydroelectric power was being generated in the developed world whereas this picture began to change significantly from 1980 1990 onwards when south american countries first brazil argentina colombia and other latin american countries and then later china and southeast asia became major regions where hydroelectric power production picked up whereas in contrast the hydroelectric power production in the developed world remained relatively static throughout these decades so the entire growth from 1000 terawatt hours to 4000 terawatt hour has occurred in china other asian countries and latin american countries and this kind of reflects in the country wise distributions as well so this is 2019 data of the total amount of hydroelectric power being produced in different countries china stands uh, as number 1 with 1304 terawatt hours brazil is the second 398 terawatt hours canada and oecd country 380 terawatt hours united states 311 terawatt hours russian federation 197 terawatt hours and india is in the 
sixth position at 172 terawatt hours. Okay. Notice, however, as a percentage of total electricity generation, Norway, Brazil, and Canada generates a significant fraction of their total electrical requirements from hydroelectricity. Norway is 93%, Brazil is 63%, Canada is 58%. Whereas in India, only 10% is being generated from hydroelectric power. In China, it's around 17%. And other countries like United States is around 7%. So as a fraction of total electricity generated required by the nation, these countries, Norway, Brazil, Canada, uh, rely a lot more on hydroelectric power rather than China, India, and these bigger nations, where even though the production is large, the total requirement is much larger. So as a fraction of the total requirement, it's small. So what are the largest hydropower plants? As we discussed, the Three Gorges Dam in China is the largest hydropower plant today, operating today, with its capacity as 22.5 in gigawatt hours, in gigawatts, and annual production in terawatt hours is around 100 terawatt hours. Okay. So here it's important to understand the capacity and annual production. The difference is the capacity factor. So uh, capacity into the number of uh, hours in a, uh, in a year into the capacity, fa capacity factor gives you the annual production, right? The Itaipu Dam in Brazil is the second largest, though this may have changed recently because China has opened up a few larger hydrogen dams as well. However, its annual production is larger. So the, basically because it has a higher capacity factor compared to the Three Gorges Dam in China. So even the Three Gorges Dam is the largest in terms of capacity, Itaipu Dam is the largest in terms of the annual production. Then we have another uh, dam from China, Zilodu, with a capacity of 13.9 gigawatts, an annual production of 55 terawatt hours. Then Guri in Venezuela in another Central American country, its capacity is 10.2 and annual production is 53. Then there is another Brazilian dam. What you can see here is that many of these hydroelectric plants are extremely big with capacities ranging in terms of tens and over than 10 or 20 gigawatts and annual production in the range of hundreds of terawatt hours. So very large centralized electricity generation is possible using hydropower sources. Okay. This figure I have taken from a paper which shows the hydropower potential that exists throughout the world, which gives you more of an idea of where in the future you are likely to see large growth in hydroelectric power generation systems. So the gross hydropower potential in terawatt hour, annual terawatt hour potential, here the values are from red to green. So the highest value in red is around 50, the lowest value of green is 0.1. Okay. So remember, compared uh, in this context, the three gorgeous gram is around 100 terawatt hours. Correct. So this is the potential in terms of 50 or more terawatt hours. This blot is 50. So this is goes to 100, 200 or something like that. The here it's 2, 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.1. So it's a logarithmic kind of a figure. So orange is around say 20, uh, 20 then you have 50, then 100. This is the gross hydropower potential in a certain geographical region. The redder it is, the more potential there is. And here is the existing hydropower plants that, that are already installed in various parts of the world and their design capacity in terms of megawatts. So gigawatts uh, is a thousand megawatts. So this becomes equal to uh, 60,000 megawatts. So 60 gigawatt capacity. Right, so that's the, the largest that you have here. Okay. But smaller ones, mostly they are these are smaller. You have 30, 20 gigawatts, etc. Okay. So here uh, you can see a lot of esta uh, in, in near the Tibetan plateau and the northeastern Indian regions and the uh, uh, Southeast Asia regions where mountainous Southeast Asian regions in Vietnam, Myanmar. Uh, the Tibetan Plateau, South China, 
these are regions of high hydroelectric power potential and you see a lot of large hydroelectric dams having been already established in these regions right these are the himalayan regions so some of the uh, dams in india are also present in this himalayan regions and there is more potential here in the uh, arunachal pradesh and other regions where there are al also some dams that have been built recently In other places, there is some amount, uh, Europe is relatively less, uh, uh, has relatively less hydropower potential, but you can see Norway, you have a lot of hydroelectric power generation capacity here in this red region, so it is generating a lot of hydropower there. The Alpine region, Italy has a lot of hydroelectric generation capacity. Similarly, in Turkey and uh, places in Syria, there is some amount of hydropower generation capacity. In Latin America, you can see Northern Brazil, Colombia, the Central uh, American countries have a lot of hydro generation capacity and a lot of established hydropower plants generated here. Similarly, Southern Brazil also has a significant potential and several of these are also have dams here. Central Africa, uh, Kenya, Nigeria and these countries also have a lot of hydropower potential. Similarly, the upper uh, catchment area of Nile also have a lot of hydropower potential. Okay. So you can see if you look at the in terms of growth rates, there is still significant untapped potential in many parts of Africa, many parts of Brazil and certain parts of the Tibetan plateau, uh, Turkey, etc. But in lot of other places, the hydropower potential is not that much. So there are large tracts in Europe. Uh, there is some hydropower potential in the uh, uh, central Indian region, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Bihar, where we all already have some dams, so not very high capacity dams. So that is a large area that we can tap into. But you can see that the potential is not geographically even. Okay, there are regions where there is a lot of hydropower potential and regions there isn't any hydropower potential at all. Okay, So there is a significant geographical differences in different parts of the world. 